So imagine a rocket scientist, NASA trained, top of his class, probably allergic to non-modular cable management. And he wakes up 2,000 years ago in first century Rome. No satellites, no power grid, no semiconductors, just togas, aqueducts, and an impressive lack of OSHA compliance. Fred, yes, we're calling him Fred, has been given one job, build a cell phone. Doesn't need apps, Bluetooth, or Snake. Since microchips are off the table, he's gonna opt for World War I era engineering, which means it will not look like this, or even this. A cell phone contains a radio, battery, amplifiers, and software, among other things, none of which existed 2,000 years ago. So how long do you think it would take a rocket scientist to build a cell phone in ancient Rome? Six months? Five years? 2,000 years? Let's find out. Oh, by the way, Fred took some Roman Latin courses in college, so there's no language barrier. And he was transported back as the emperor, meaning he has access to unlimited manpower, the brightest minds and tech of the day, and no accusations of sorcery. Hopefully. We're not trying to make this more difficult than it needs to be. Fred's waking up in the Roman Empire, because if he went all the way back to the Stone Age, this video would be 10,000 hours long. Plus, I'm making this video, and I think ancient Rome was a very interesting time. They're extremely archaic to us today, but at the same time, extremely advanced compared to the Stone Age. In fact, let's just take a quick peek at how long this video would take if Fred went back 200,000 years. One of the many things we need to invent is mining. So we need a pickaxe. Find a good sharp stone. Find a strong stick for a handle. Tie them together. We don't have any rope, or leather cord, or duct tape. How to make a leather cord. Cut the leather into a strip. Whoops, no leather. First find a deer. Oh look, a dead deer. Lucky. Remove the skin of the deer with a knife. Just kidding, don't have a knife. Tear the skin off with a sharp stone while questioning your life choices. Okay, apply salt to preserve the hide. Dang it, no salt. But the ocean has salt. Easy, get a bucket of seawater. Oh no, we don't have a bucket. After 14 arduous years, Fred finally invents a rope. Back to Rome. We're gonna need a microphone, amplifier, modulator, oscillator, power source, antenna, and a speaker. Most of the stuff needed to build these things already exists, including wire which had been around for centuries already, mainly for jewelry. The main thing Fred's lacking is electricity. Thankfully, Fred understands electromagnetism like the back of his hand. He aced AP physics, skipped prom, and built a Tesla coil in his garage just to toast his bread. All right, what'll probably take the longest to make are vacuum tubes. These magical glass bulbs can amplify signals, modulate frequencies, generate waves, and act as binary switches simply depending on wiring and applied voltages. They're basically the Swiss army knives of pre-silicon electronics. They consist of just a heated cathode, control grid, and anode vacuumed inside a glass bulb. First invented in 1904, they powered early computers like the ENIAC, which came out in 1946 and used 17,000 of them. Fred won't need that many. He's not building Facebook. Glass blowing had just been invented around this time, so that part's taken care of. The biggest challenge Fred will face is creating the vacuum inside the bulb. Oxygen burns out filaments quickly, so Fred recruits a team of Roman scientists. They're enthusiastic, but still think magnets are angry gods. While they work on the vacuum tubes, Fred moves on to the power source. He could relatively easily make an archaic voltaic pile battery just using copper, zinc, and salt water, but these things aren't efficient or powerful enough. He'd need enough metal to bankrupt the empire. Modifying an existing Roman water wheel to create a generator would be an easier option. All he needs is a magnet and some copper wire mounted on a wooden axle. He'll also need a gear system with a flywheel to maintain steady RPM. Next, Fred needs to construct the speaker. It's kind of amazing how simple and easy a speaker is to build. Electric current through a wire coil creates a magnetic field that can vibrate parchment, pushing air, making sound. We do want these coils to be insulated, but the Romans can figure that out with beeswax or oil-soaked cloth. And if Fred just creates two of these bad boys, he can speak into the other one, creating the microphone. That'll take a little bit of time to build, so Fred will move on to transmitting and receiving radio waves. An antenna size is inversely proportional to the wavelength of the signal it receives. Since the first cell phones worked on the 850 megahertz spectrum, which is 35.2 centimeters long, Fred will build his to work on that spectrum, meaning all he needs is a copper wire 17.6 centimeters long. To control the flow of electrons and hear the incoming signal, Fred will need a diode. A piece of crystal, iron pyrite or galena would work as they're both readily available, with a thin movable wire touching it can act as a primitive diode. 
We'll also need a capacitor to tune to the right frequency, which can be accomplished with just two metal plates that you can adjust next to each other. Fred's basically creating an extremely simple radio called a crystal radio, which requires no power source as it gets its power directly from the electromagnetic waves it's picking up. These were the first kinds of radio from back in the early 20th century. Lastly, Fred needs to adjust voltages, which can be done creating a charcoal clay resistor. Charcoal, aka carbon, is a decent electrical conductor, but not a great one. Mixing it in clay spaces out the carbon particles, limiting electron flow. The more carbon in the mix, the lower the resistance. More clay means higher resistance. So this process will take a lot of trial and error, but the Romans had patience, and Fred has his interns. Fred Fred has all the major parts of the cell phone being constructed now, so let's go back and see how the vacuum tubes are going. The ingenuity of the Romans, mixed with Fred's guidance and knowledge, helped them come up with a solution for creating a vacuum. It involves mercury, a thin glass tube, time, and gravity. Mercury had been around since the ancient Egyptian times, but it took them a while to create the thin glass. What they built was what we now call a Sprengel vacuum pump, which was invented in 1865. Since mercury is very dense, 13.6 times more dense than water, and has high surface tension, it'll pull air out of this bulb, trapping it in between droplets as gravity pulls them down. This is a slow process, taking up to a few days. It took a lot of trial and error, so we didn't have 15 working vacuum tubes for almost a year. But they are now complete, and Fred has everything he needs to start putting it together. Fred wires each part together on a piece of olive wood, harvested from the Imperial Orchard, creating what historians will later mislabel as pagan jewelry. He's got his power source at the water mill, his microphone creating sound waves into electrical signals, his amp to boost those weak signals, the oscillator to generate a carrier frequency, a modulator to combine audio with that signal, his antenna to transmit the signals via radio waves, his receiver to detect and demodulate incoming signal, and a speaker to convert those signals back into sound waves. After much fiddling, he makes a cell phone call just 18 months after waking up in ancient Rome. The phone call doesn't work since there are no cell towers, infrastructure, or roaming plans, but that's beside the point. He did it, and he's going home.